Welcome everyone to the Canadian Nurses Association webinar series, Progress and Practice. This webinar is entitled Community Health Nursing Vision, Roles and Capacities for Transforming Health Systems. This is the second webinar this year for CHNC's Systems Transformation webinars. This session will be recorded for nurses who are unable to participate today. My name is Elizabeth Marin. I am the Membership and Network Specialist at CNA, and I will be hosting this webinar. At the end of the presentation, we will answer your questions, which you can type in the Q&A box that you can find by hovering your mouse at the bottom of your screen and clicking on the Q&A button. We will address as many questions as time allows. The, certification, the certificate of participation will be emailed to you along with the link to the recording of this webinar. And now a little about our presenters, Susan Duncan and Tanya Saunders. Susan Duncan is a professor and director of the School of Nursing at the University of Victoria. She is a passionate advocate for nursing education and the nursing profession, drawing on critical and historical scholarship to inform leadership and change in nursing and health organizations. Her practice, teaching and research focuses on community health nursing nursing education, and health policy. She has served as a board member on numerous regional, provincial, and national nursing and health organizations, such as the Canadian Nurses Association and the Canadian Association of Schools of Nursing. She has held senior leadership positions in universities while advocating for the advancement of undergraduate and graduate nursing education programs. As a founding president of the Association of Registered Nurses of BC, now the nurses and nurse practitioners of BC, she holds the vision of the nursing profession as an essential global political force for the values and goals of primary health care. Tanya Saunders is a faculty member of Thompson Rivers University School of Nursing in Kamloops, BC, and is a PhD student at the University of Victoria. Her area of focus is public health nursing and community health nursing with Indigenous communities, nursing education and leadership. Tanya has recently conducted research into community health nursing, nursing contributions to comprehensive school health. She is interested in examining policies, structures and practices that shape and inform and influence community health nursing practice. Tanya believes that the challenge ahead is defining and taking hold of our future practice, leading and directing how the roles of registered nurses will contribute to the health, the achievement of the UN sustainable goals and the nursing profession. Over to you now, Susan and Tanya. Thank you, Elizabeth, and, and good morning, everyone. This is Tanya Sanders. And um, if we could just have the next slide, please. Sorry. Thanks, Elizabeth. So as we uh, get started this morning, for, for me in BC, an afternoon for those of you in the East, we would like to acknowledge the land that we are on and for all of you that you are situated in. So Susan is uh, coming to us today from the University of Victoria, and we acknowledge with respect the history, customs, and cultures of the Algonquin-speaking people on whose traditional territory the University of Victoria stands. We raise our hands to the Algonquin and the Simchontan speaking peoples whose relationship with this land continues today. And I'm connecting with all of you today from Kamloops and Thompson Rivers University and the city of Kamloops is located on the Tecumloops to Sequetmuk territory within the unceded traditional lands of the Sequetmuk Ulu. Next slide, please. Thank you. So as we uh, gather today to consider these large questions about vision, roles, and capacities, and our work towards transforming health systems, we've identified a few goals for our time together in terms of learning objectives. So we would like to look at the meaning of systems transformation in the context of community health nursing. Also spend some time exploring roles and opportunities for transformation to take some time to think about the contemporary and global policy influences on nursing and health systems, to analyze the capacity of nursing organizations in systems transformation, and to also look at some exemplars of nursing influence within uh, systems transformation. 
In terms of our plan for today, we'll, we'll start with some definitions so that we can connect and ensure that we have the same understanding of the terms we're using and provide a little context. As I always say to my students, and this familiar to many of you, we have to know, uh, you know, it depends. So we need to consider and, and think about where we're located and the context currently that's influencing our situation. We'll look at some theoretical foundations that can inform our contributions and identify opportunities and have a conversation then about vision. And we'd really like to have some time at the end to engage in some critical questions and dialogue, which as you'll see as we proceed through is uh, where we see some really important work needs to be done in terms of raising questions and having these dialogues. So I will turn this over now to Susan to begin our conversation about uh, definitions. Yes, good morning everyone. Uh, Susan Duncan speaking. I'm very pleased to be joining you for this webinar. Thank you, Elizabeth, for the introductions and Tanya for your acknowledgement of the land. So I will begin by clarifying how we will refer to community health nursing roles and practice in this presentation. And as you, as you can all appreciate, the definitions of community health nursing vary according to role setting population of focus and the primary focus of the practice. So as we understand community health nursing as the umbrella term for roles that support health and well-being of people wherever they are in the community. In this presentation, we might have a slight emphasis on public health nurses and nursing, but we will also refer to home health care and other roles and settings. We focus on public health nursing because that's where we are situated, Tanya and I, in our own nursing practice but we also recognize and appreciate uh, that this role uh, is in need of transformation in the present day context of healthcare. So for instance, with focus of, of community health nursing practice, we know that public health nursing as its primary focus has the health of populations, but it is informed by relationships with individuals, families, groups, and communities. Home health care, has care in the home and across um, settings of care, particularly for people experiencing health challenges as the primary focus, but home healthcare nurses also may take a population focus in determining and defining their programs and systems of care. So next slide, please. So recent revisions, very recent this year, of the community health nursing standards of practice, as you see them on the slide, affirm a depth and breadth of focus on the health of persons, families, communities, encompassing roles across the health system and beyond. And these have been established and reaffirmed through rigorous processes, including the Delphi method. And so they are the benchmarks of practice. And we can see here that um, the, two, the two standards bolded uh, have, a, have a renewed or a new emphasis, one being health equity as uh, in recognition of the impact and the significance of the determinants of health and the community health nursing role in advocating for healthy public policy, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. One issue, for example, that nurses are called upon today for by the World Health Organization is to advocate for universal health coverage worldwide. So this is the issue of equity and access to essential health services. There is also renewed emphasis on evidence informed practice. And uh, within this standard, the appreciation that community health nurses must draw on diverse forms of knowledge and evidence to guide nursing practice and inform and support program decisions. And I would also refer to the importance of participatory research and evaluation methods, also in the imperative to involve communities in these processes moving forward. Next slide, please. So just a little bit of a history uh, uh, reference here. As you can appreciate, um, community health nursing is uh, one of the earliest nursing roles, uh, certainly predating in institutional uh, care in Canada and beyond. This year, the UBC School of Nursing is celebrating 100 years of university education, and it is important to, for us all to take note 
that public health nursing in particular was the driver for the nursing education programs to move into the university. That was in 1919. And for nurses, and this was because of the recognition that community health nursing in particular required a breadth and depth of educational preparation that the university could provide. So it's interesting and timely to reflect on these foundations in Canada and uh, these historical foundations, and in particular, how community health nursing education is recognized in the Bachelor of Science in Nursing programs of today. Nurses and nurses all over the last century worked to pro project a vision of their role within emerging uh, departments of health within various municipalities and jurisdictions. And in so doing, they, they were responding and anticipating the, challenge, the health challenges of the time, including preventing illnesses in children, families, communicable diseases, etc. cetera. Uh, Glenis Zilm and Ethel Warbenuk, historians in, in British Columbia, identify the first nursing specialties as school health and TB. So as I've said early on, these nurses, community health nurses held a broad vision on the socio-political dimensions of health. They organized programs and systems of care, as well as attended to the immediate health needs of individuals and families in homes, clinics, and schools. Also significant to reflect on is that these early public health nursing and community health nursing services were universal and accessible to populations regardless of the level of risk. There was also attention to community level advocacy for advancements. And in this, in this way, the nurses worked in partnership with women's groups, religious leaders, non-governmental associations, or organizations including the Red Cross. And so these partnerships were important to advancing nursing roles, community nursing roles and the profession of nursing. And then just a final historical note, there was uh, quite a bit of attention to leadership in community health nursing within provincial governments at the time. So there were positions that, positions that were designated just for leadership in community health nursing and public health nursing. And up until quite recently in British Columbia, in our province, public health nursing and nurses came together and leaders of, uh, from around the province met at least once a year and they came together physically to, to discuss issues, to find programs and directions and work with um, their counterparts in the ministries of health so that they could have a, a definite influence on the direction of practice. So again, um, I present these, some of these historical um, anecdotes as um, something we can reflect on in terms of continuity with our past as we look to the future. Over to you, Tanya. Great, if we could have the next slide, please. And I see we have a, a question about capacity building and I, I think we'll get to that, but you know what, I'm, we will, uh, I'll just flag that towards the end as well to come back to your question. So thank you for posting that. Um, so I would just want to speak a little bit about context in terms of some of the global uh, and national policy influences and also some of the current tensions in terms of thinking about our roles and visions and transformation that inform where we are currently and where and potentially and how we move forward. So here in Canada, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action provide um, an opening for us as nurses and as citizens of the country to contribute and call on us to consider our roles in reconciliation and the improvement in health for Indigenous peoples, families, and communities, considering access to education, improvements in healthcare and nursing education, and uh, have called specifically to schools of nursing in terms of the addressing reconciliation in our curriculum. The Nursing Now campaign is a global movement which provides an incredible opportunity for us as nurses to look at our contributions to policy change and leadership. So led by the World Health Organization and the International Council of Nurses, 
who have declared 2020 the year of the nurse and midwife. Um, there's an incredible opportunity to harness some of the power we have as nurses globally across the world to make changes, to look at our contributions in leadership, um, <clears throat> pardon me, and to, con to connect. So the website is actually a wonderful resource if you haven't had an opportunity to look at that, where there are examples of nurses' work and new opportunities and ways of engaging with communities. The UN Sustainable Development Goals provide clear direction on global goals for nursing to improve um, the health of, our, of people globally and call on other systems as well and really provide some direction for us in terms of uh, the needs across the world. Primary care is certainly uh, policy influence for us to consider and we will be speaking of this again and uh, later in the presentation as an exemplar but important for us to consider how this integrates with community health nursing the role of nurses in both health, home health and public health and um, how primary care networks or systems i know that terminology is different depending on your location and province uh, but how these primary care networks are connecting to our work and where we're positioning nursing and how is nursing being involved in the positioning and leadership of those networks. We also recognize there is a current context in your work situations, depending where you are located again. So there is this tension, um, you know, the reality of the systems that are based in measurement and outcome, particularly when we work in prevention and we work in restorative health where what we're wanting to see is for nothing to happen. We're wanting to see people to stay healthy and for people to stay well. And how do we measure and articulate that value when our system is created um, to count and measure other things? So there are realities in our context about program changes, budget reductions, um, and a real need and a call for us to be very articulate and clear about our roles and contribution and values in the system. So there are many local, national, and in international influences on our, our current state of affairs, if you will, and uh, some tensions, but also opportunities and expectations in terms of how we move forward. And for us to think about how we continue on in our practice, how we rise up to these challenges, and how we can contribute to change. And on the next slide, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the influences more particularly focused on what society needs from community health nurses. So a lot of these pieces are coming from um, a document that the Canadian Public Health Association released in the spring of this year that is entitled the public health in the context of health systems renewal in Canada. It's a helpful piece that provides background summarizing some of the key features that have contributed to the current state of Canadian public health systems. And the second part of the document is a uh, position statement in response to those changes. It shares important perspective on the context. Nationally, it looks at the public health systems and provides some background to changes, reforms um, over time. It's interesting to note, however, there is no mention of nursing or nurses in this document. So it's important for us to consider how we take this up and also how we can inform and look at nursing role and contributions to these changes over time. So as we move through our conversation this morning, we'd like to hear from you as well about your thoughts in terms of the absence of nursing and how we can take up a presence and role in these places. So next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about what we mean by transformation. So in terms of this term, we're drawing on some literature that looked at uh, transformational um, governance in an environmental setting. However, they've provided such a clear definition here of some of the aspects of what makes systems transformation as opposed to change or other terms that we've heard. So transformative um, action really looks at disrupting status quo and countering that resilience that exists in the current system where we just bounce back from change after change. So how do we actually disrupt this? Systems transformation has the possibility of creating new capacities and systems. It requires attention to hierarchy, power, and vision. 
and it requires new networks and models to position the vision for transformation. So this matters because transformation is something different. It really is those features that are disruptive and creating more than just a change. So on the next slide, we've sharing some uh, terms you may have heard or may connect with where you're at in practice. And I'm not gonna define all of these, but rather recognize that these terms are used in many different settings to speak to um, change. So we have the terms renewal, reform, reorganization, and now this idea of transformation coming in, which I've just highlighted is different. So we're going to pull up our first poll question just to um, ask if you've been involved in any systems changes in your practice. And then secondly, what have those changes been called that you may have been involved in? Have they been reform? Have they been renewal, reorganization, transformation, or potentially there's something other than those? Uh, and you can share those with us as well. Okay, so as those um, come to an end, we can possibly move on to the next slide and we'll see what our responses are. Great, thank you. So interesting. So the majority of folks, of, of course, have been involved in systems change, which is um, clear there. And also reorganization has been the most commonly used term in terms of uh, creating change. And a few looks like as well, the term transformation is entering into, uh, into our world. So thank you for sharing that. Over to you, Susan. Okay, thank you. I'm going to speak briefly to theoretical perspectives in community health nursing. And we, uh, we believe, of course, that community health nursing theory and research is what should guide the development of practice for 21st century health gains. So on this slide, we've included a reference to some of the theoretical perspectives uh, originating and in community health nursing and that, and that provide direction, and there are others, of course. So Tanya has already referred to primary health care as a guiding philosophy that is rooted in concepts of health equity and universal coverage to essential health services. And of course, primary health care remains a, a very important lens for us as we look at programs and transformation. The promotion of health equity is affirmed again in our current standards document as foundational to community health nursing. It was, it's been described conceptually, for example, in a conceptual, in a seminal article by Ruder and Kushner in 2010, and there have been um, many positions and papers since that time. Um, Adeline Falk Raphael and Claire Betker, our current uh, CNA president, have developed critical caring theory based on their research into public health nursing practice. And there are a number of Canadian scholars, including Dr. Lisa Bergberskin, who are researching and developing theory on how Indigenous worldviews and knowledge can and must enrich nursing and healthcare and health systems. Dr. Patricia Butterfield, who is an American CHN researcher, first introduced the concept of upstream thinking into the nursing literature in 1990. And she has recently, uh, just in the last couple of years, extended her theory to develop the Butterfield model for upstream health or BUMP. And it is certainly worth a read in terms of how it can actually provide specific direction for nursing interventions at population levels. And that's Vittori Knowing is a component of Chin Peggy Chen and Lena Kramer's model of knowledge development in nursing. The knowledge is particularly relevant as CHNs work to address power differentials and relationships and limits to nursing potential and health equity goals and agendas. Emancipatory knowing encompasses critical inquiry, 
and questions related to social change and transformation. It's therefore quite relevant to what we're talking about today. Tani has talked about theory and models of transformation that's current, they're currently evolving in different fields and dis different disciplines, so we can certainly draw on that uh, knowledge base as well. And Claire Becker and Ruth Schofield have uh, been very active in conducting research and developing models and workshops specific to community health nursing leadership. And again, referring to our past, how we connect around our vision and, and our leadership is very important in terms of setting directions. And then, of course, finally, we have, as I've mentioned before, the CHNC Professional Practice Model and Standards of Practice of 2019. So we've also just included on the, uh, as a final note on this slide, reference to a website some of you may um, be aware of called it's nurseology.net, recently developed uh, by Peggy Chen and other nurses, including Adelon, Adeline Falk Raphael. And it includes references to many resources, including theories that are relevant. But uh, it's important to realize that these nurses develop this uh, particular website because of the concern that there is a loss of nursing perspectives in our, in our programs and how they are evolving, and perhaps more of a drift to medical models and other, and other perspectives. So uh, as you know, uh, the nursing identity, the role identity is, is a component of interprofessional practice, and we must pay attention to that uh, strong role identity within community health nursing. So an oh, example of a perspective uh, that is not on this slide is relational inquiry as uh, developed by Doan and Barco in, in their 2015 uh, book. And they emphasize continuity of care and relationship in nursing. And I bring this up because I think it is important to consider how we are actualizing continuity in our relationships, in our nursing programs today with individuals, families, and communities, and schools, et cetera. Um, Tanya um, and I have recently been involved in some research related to comprehensive school health, and that was one of our insights, is that you know, the relationship over time between the nurse and the school and the community is, is essential to um, developing a comprehensive school health uh, program. So next slide, please. So nursing's position and the way forward must be embedded in theory and research. And so you can see that the quotes by nurse theorists point to the critical, essential contributions of community health nursing. And they point to the rationale of why and how we are uniquely positioned to address the health of society and how we must move forward to meet this potential. And so in particular, looking at, again, the Falk, uh, Falk Raphael quote of 2005, nurses practice at the intersection of public policy and personal lives. They are therefore ideally situated and morally obligated to include sociopolitical advocacy in their practice. And, uh, and then of course, the slide also does continue the quotes by uh, Patricia Butterfield as well. Next slide, please. So as Tandy mentioned, we're going to speak to just a couple of examples uh, from our practice, the current, current context in healthcare, and, and to think about how, how this relates to transformation. So we're all aware of the recent, recent measles outbreak and how it did shine a spotlight on problems, in particular vaccine hesitancy within the population. And in fact, the WHO refers to vaccine hes hesitancy as one of the top priority health issues globally. So I noted that media reports in Canada continue, they have focused, they continue to focus on the low immunization rates, the loss of herd immunity, and they refer to vaccine he hesitancy as the root cause. And there have been multiple reports and interviews with medical historians, pharmacists, policymakers, physicians. However, there was minimal discussion with nurses or, or a nursing perspective presented on this issue of vaccine hesitancy and low immunization rates. 
historically, it's not, it's not trivial. It's non-trivial to note that public health nurses have provided immunization services since perhaps the last century, almost exclusively with, with a number of populations. And so I think that it is important, it's a pause for reflection as to where we're at right now with our immunization programs and to realize that in fact, we might need some transformation in this area and that the relationship issues again with people in community are they're critical to addressing issues of vaccine hesitancy and immunization risks and benefits. So that brings us to the question of what opportunities might exist for public health nurses to transform immunization programs. And what comes to mind, and I would love to have some conversation on these ideas, could nurses launch a national public health nursing campaign on vaccine hesitancy and health literacy, which would involve evaluation and refresh, refreshing our immunization roles based on primary health care principles. So for example, strengthening and emphasizing the value added health literacy components so that immunization programs are much more than the administration of the vaccines, which is important, but also attention, greater attention to the, the needs and desires of the people in the community and shaping the programs, including the relationships with nurses and nursing. So much more public participation, meeting the public where they were at in defining the programs, including issues of accessibility, where and when clinics are offered, how information is valued and disseminated. And I know that um, many of you are involved in this work as we speak. And child health clinics, I think, again, could undergo some transformation to really bring that value added piece in terms of uh, nurses roles with in trusting relationships with families and community and also providing uh, the counseling and knowledge for healthy child development along with the immunization programs in, in creative ways. So Tanya, over to you. Thank you. So on our next slide, we just have a, another exemplar to consider around primary care. And I just want to acknowledge the Shaheen, thank you for your uh, question here about um, how do nurses, um, you know, the tension around competing priorities and raising that question. So we'll speak to that in a little bit. Um, and I love this comment as well that's just come in around the advocacy for a chief nursing officer in Canada. And certainly that is one of the pillars of the Nursing Now campaign is to look at uh, advocating once again for a CNO role. Uh, nationally. So uh, we'll see how, where that unfolds as we progress into the year of the nurse. So in terms of primary care, I'll just speak to this um, quickly so we can move forward into further conversation. Primary health care, as we've talked about, is that broader view of a lens, philosophy, and principles. And primary care is one component of that, looking at the points of access in care. So this is another opportunity for us to consider transformation. And recently, Dr. Julie Lukowicz presented uh, on a webinar uh, the development of the competencies for primary care nurses through the Canadian Family Nurse, um, sorry, Canadian Family Practice Nurses Association. And so this national association is uh, it's exciting to see their work in terms of developing the roles and competencies for BSN prepared nurses in primary care. This is, I think, you know, a really good example of um, disrupting status quo, creating those new capacities, developing and challenging hierarchy and, and the power and vision for nurses' contributions. And it is requiring new networks and models. So it is, you know, fits in with that definition of really transforming opportunities for nurses in the system. And there's more to do around those current conversations that many of you are having around integration of community health um, nurses into primary care. And, uh, you know, recently we've seen the challenge around uh, primary care provision in home care, chronic disease management, in public health nursing, and there's been conversations around uh, role and title. So what does it mean to lose the title of public health nurse and be called primary care? 
providing services to, uh, to all. And yet we also know that there are members and um, populations and communities they're underserved and whose needs are not being met. So how can we, with these new opportunities, um, look at transforming care and meeting needs of uh, health needs more broadly? I'm just gonna move on to the next slide to, to think about um, contributors to systems transformation. So, you know, we've talked a little bit about context, um, some of our current challenges in the system that we have, but it's also important for us to consider the uh, contributors and the strengths that we can leverage as we want to and engage in this, these transformative pieces. So I was reminded of this uh, piece this summer when I presented and had some conversations with folks from the United States where um, public health practices are not always funded. Um, and so in Canada, we do have this uh, strength and opportunity where largely our services are publicly funded. Nurses, we work within systems and there's also nurses who are external to systems and both of those pieces provide us with opportunities to influence change and have conversations at different levels with different folks, with different change makers who can help us to open up doors in different ways. Our nursing associations have presence and leadership. And this is one of our things to consider as we move, and we'll speak to this again, the opportunity for collective advocacy, working with our associations to bring forward questions and vision and voice for nurses. And nursing education in Canada has, uh, provides an opportunity for us. Again, there's strong relationships and influence um, in both undergraduate and graduate programs and um, have an opportunity really to play a role in advancing community health nursing and our, and our contributions. We have those relationships um, with communities that help us to connect, to stay uh, grounded and also to consider and look at the needs and create change from that place. So really where are, and one of our questions to consider is where can we create that collective advocacy and what are some of our levers for transformation in terms of being able to disrupt, to be able to challenge and, and engage with hierarchy and power so that we can make some substantial changes in our systems. And Susan now is gonna to speak to an example of collective advocacy for public policy. On the next slide. Oh, sorry, I forgot about the polls question. So <laughs> the two questions for these are looking at if you see a role for uh, community health nurses in transforming nursing programs. And the second piece is what resources can help to drive systems transformation. So as you're answering those, we'll move forward um, and Susan can speak about this example. and summarize the, uh, the poll results. So, wow, we see a 99% agreement that we're, we have a role in transformation and some, um, some good support for the role, uh, you know, the resources that are needed to support us and uh, for all of the above. So nursing associations, managers, researchers, educators, CHNs in practice, and partnerships. So uh, this is um, this is very good information for us. Okay, I'll move uh, I'll move on to the slide here on collective advocacy. And uh, Tanya has discussed how important this is as a cornerstone of our practice. We just talked a little bit about the example of um, uh, Parliament Hill and the Board of Directors taking a stand on refugee health benefits. So we need to really examine uh, what role our professional associations can play in supporting our collective advocacy. 
And I see one of the comments uh, and the Q&A relates to the importance of a CNO, a Chief Not Nursing Officer in Government, and ensuring that person has is a community health nurse. And I couldn't agree more. And as you know, this is one of the features of the Nursing Now campaign for Canada. So I'm going to move forward, Tanya, if you want to take the next slide. Thank you. So as we reach uh, the end of our time with you, we, uh, we're getting some great questions and want to get to those as well. And so just thinking about this idea of creating vision. So, you know, vision really is in sending, setting the intended future, identifying the goals and values of the group to think about what it is we want um, and how we articulate that. So hopefully we've shared some ideas with you today around what can help us in developing this vision for change and transformation using our theoretical foundations to help guide us. And you'll notice also a thread throughout relating to relationships and those connections that we have with community and with each other. And that relationship again then to policy. There's also a difference that we want to think about and challenge as we move forward around the difference between adapting and resilience and just keeping bouncing back and the idea of really transforming and changing and disrupting that status quo. And the other thing in terms of developing a vision that we need is process. So we need to be thinking about how we do this and who we engage with and how we can move this forward. And so now I'll turn it over to Susan for some critical questions for us to consider. Thank you. So there have, you know, there has been recent discourse, research, conversations um, about our practice and some observations, for example, the rise of technical and task-based programs as opposed to relationships with communities and the losses of some meaningful programs in community health nursing and that our contributions, community health nursing contributions, roles and influences are not recognized in the discourses of organizations in which they work. So we're all aware of that conversation and the need to really shift this. So uh, these are the questions that we think must be addressed as we consider how to move forward. We need to be very, very clear on what society needs from community health nursing. We need to think thought, we need to be thoughtful about what are the first steps to start to engage CHNs in the transformation of nursing programs and of systems. And do we begin with our own programs? And, and then systems change will, will, will come with that. How do we harness our collective power and momentum? And I see there are several comments and questions on the Q&A. Uh, related to this question, this central question. And finally, are there examples of systems transformation where the status quo has been disrupted? So this is really our last slide. And uh, what I'd like to do now is bring up our final poll question before we move into a, a more active Q&A session. So the question, do you feel prepared for systems transformation? Okay, thank you for these responses. So it's quite mixed. Um, actually, no, there's a majority of nurses um, on this call, 65%, who do not feel prepared for systems transformation. So clearly, uh, we need much more conversation about what this means for us at this time and how we can um, find some momentum in moving our directions into the 21st century. 
So I think what we can do now is turn to the Q&A. Uh, we have a number of questions and comments. And um, so the first one that was asked early on was in relation to the community health nursing standard of practice related to capacity building and how is it, how is it um, addressed in the standard. And so uh, really uh, when I look at that particular standard number five, it really is about partnering, community health nursing partnering with, with uh, clients um, at all levels to build capacity for health. So that really supports the community-based action, uh, working with people in a much more collaborative uh, approach to defining programs and informing decisions. And I'm wondering, I know Ruth Schofield is on the line as well. If, if Ruth, if you have anything to add to that particular comment. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, good. Okay, thanks. I think you've nicely answered that, and I think these opportunities we're having with webinars that we're organizing through the Community Health Nursing Leadership Institute with CHNC gives us an opportunity to build our capacity. But I think we've really been challenged today with other ways that we or ways that we need to think about adjusting, at, not just adjusting as we've clearly heard, but acting on some of these changes. Clearly all those on are experiencing that. But where can we tap into areas to build our capacity to do that? I think those are excellent questions. So thank you, Ruth. What you said. So I think there are also a couple of questions that are related to capacity building as we're viewing it within our own practice. Uh, one is from Shaheen regarding the tensions around competing priorities that we hear a lot, that nurses are not able to focus on community development and advocacy. Um, and then another comment uh, later on about um, Samantha, from Samantha on how we view advocacy in PHM practice and uh, you know that there is some movement away from advocacy, nurses being discouraged um, from being advocates. So these are very central questions that we must come to terms with and find levers to change. Um, I think one answer certainly is to, uh, to consider that perhaps we do have avenues within our organizations to come together as uh, nursing councils uh, to, to present uh, directions for our programs, uh, to uh, present evaluations of current strategies and how we might refresh and move those forward. But um, recognize that there are limits within organizations to advocacy. We could also uh, look to our professional associations, uh, the CHNC for example, to assist with that advocacy and that voice for what community health nursing programs need to be. So I will uh, ask Tanya also to weigh in on that uh, particular that particular theme of advocacy and um, tensions in priorities. Yes, thank you. It's it's such a great question, um, and you know if we if we had the answer, if it was straightforward, right? It would. Um, there's many pieces to it. So, I, and I think that's, you know, Shaheen, thank you for bringing that up and, and, and also Samantha for just recognizing those, those tensions. And, and I also just wanna, you know, Yvette has made a, <clears throat> pardon me, a great comment uh, that I think is important to consider in terms of how we can share those best practices um, and where perhaps areas have been able to make change or advocate for and, and, and put program priorities in place that work so thinking of how we can ensure that we're sharing our, our information amongst ourselves as nurses so that we can learn, <clears throat> pardon me, and uh, continue to have those, um, you know, those opportunities to share prioritization and, and how we've been able to maintain programs. And I think it reminds me of that piece about micro and macro as well, right? So I see here right now on our context in BC, there's um, a large move towards uh, catching up school immunizations and the reality for nurses in the new year is a focus on that with no additional funds. And so 
there's going to be programs that are suspended and you know areas of our community that aren't being served and of course pieces like community development are, are going to be put on the, on the back burner again as they enter into these priority program areas that have been set externally from the ministry. So I think there's a piece around a response from the nurses um, that is happening that I'm seeing in terms of, you know, sharing concerns with the, the local management and senior executive of health authorities. Um, but again, what is the role and opportunity for us to connect more together in terms of having some collective advocacy and voice for the recognition of what that means for other um, program areas and how do we share that information at a different level of concern in terms of what we see as nurses um, because we tend to sort of roll with it and adapt and we're very good at that um, you know responding um, but when do we disrupt when do we ask those difficult questions in terms of and highlight for people in decision making roles um, what this means in terms of the, the pieces that are being um, put on pause while we focus in these other areas. Um, so I think there's opportunities at both that sort of the, the local level and then also the, the larger level to create some conversations around those pieces. I think one, other, one other point that we sometimes lose sight of because we tend to work very much within nursing at this, at this point is, is the power of partnerships with women's groups, with NGOs, as our uh, predecessors did, to bring attention to the health needs of the populations we're trying to serve and how important nursing contributions are. Uh, for example, the district nursing um, initiative in Alberta at the turn of last century was brought about by women's groups who worked with nurses to, to bring attention to governments and policymakers about how women needed district nursing in the rural communities of Alberta. So I think to look to these other partners who can stand with, with nursing to advocate for essential services. So we're certainly seeing some passion in the, in the questions and um, there's certainly perspectives coming forward in the Q&A um, from rural, rural nursing to you know, care of uh, veterans as a population. Um, comment about mentorship and leadership is essential as well. Um, how do we, uh, how do we do that? How do we provide the leadership and the mentorship for transformative, transformative processes? Um, a very good question, and uh, and again, I think our. Um, uh, our, our nursing organizations, and I see Ruth would like to perhaps weigh in on this question. So over to you, Ruth. Yeah, I think this is a wonderful opportunity to share some of the work that um, CHNC and the, CA, the Community Health Nursing Institute, Leadership Institute is doing. It's the fact that we exist now. CHNC has supported the development of the Institute and this webinar is part of the Institute um, and because community health nurses have said leadership is a priority to us and hence the, our association has valued that message, has supported the development of the Institute, which has led to this, these webinars that we're organizing and planning to continue. And we also have a mentorship program, and it's exciting to see we have key leaders and mentors wanting to move forward with leadership development. So if you're interested in leadership development through mentorship, we have a formal program through the Institute, and there's a matching process, a dyad, and a framework, and guide, manual, whatever, to go through that process you can for uh, mentorship and leadership. So anybody who's interested, feel free to connect with me um, and support you in that. And we also do a pre-conference at our annual conference, which is in Vancouver, out where um, we're now in BC with Susan and uh, Tanya. Um, so that is our national conference in uh, May. So the pre-conference is about leadership, and we are looking at leadership in environmental health all about system transformation again because system transformation is the most is the most common thing that's coming through around leadership in community health nursing so we're keen to hear from you so i just a uh, few thoughts on that 
Thank you. Other, Thank you. other piece I'm just going to mention because I noticed our, our time is coming to a close here quickly. Uh, but Patty, you've made some, and uh, Yvette also have raised sort of an interesting question. I think that um, what comes out for me is a, a, a need to connect as nurses and to come together. I think the idea, Patty, you shared is these idea, communities of practice. And, you know, again, this idea of, of, as nurses, if we can connect and um, share and the opportunity to have collective voice has um, significant benefit to us to be able to move forward. Um, so we're not sort of the, the, what, the lone wolf or the lone voice. Uh, and within those co communities of practice, often there's an opportunity then for real um, mentorship and leadership and action to take place. So that's a great suggestion. And thank you for bringing that forward. Uh, thank you, Susan and Tanya. That's about all the time we have right now for the Q&A. But before we wrap up the webinar, I'd like to um, bring up two final poll questions about the usefulness of the webinar for today and if there were any other people in the room with you. So while you're answering that question, just to let you know that all our recordings of past webinars, including today's webinar, are posted on the CNA YouTube channel and under the uh, Progress and Practice playlist. So you can always go and uh, listen to the recordings after the fact if you want to do that again. So our next webinar will be about supporting nursing intra-professional collaboration, a framework designed by nurses for nurses. This will be presented on December 5th from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're having some good answers on our poll questions. Um, that's really great. So I'm just waiting for a few more people to provide their answers and then we will wrap up this webinar. Okay, so I'm just going to show the results very quickly. So that's, um, thank you so much. So thank you again, Susan and Tanya for presenting today on systems transformation in community health nursing. We hope that this stimulated your thinking on this subject. And we uh, thank you all for participating today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.